No man or woman who tries to pursue an ideal in his or her own way is without enemies. This means anyone who believes in a cause will most likely have someone who disagrees or doesn't like it and will go against them in some way. Good morning, Gulf Elementary. My name is Daisy Bates, and I am a civil rights activist and a newspaper publisher. I was born on November 11, 1914, to my father Hezekiah and my mother Millie in Huttig, Arkansas. When I was three years old, my mother was killed. After this tragedy, my father left town for his own safety and left me with my mother's closest friends. When I was eight years old, I found out that no one was ever punished for this crime and it made me angry and I wanted to do something about it in my own way. As I grew older, I dedicated my life to ending racial injustice or unfairness. I attended Hutchings Segregated Public Schools. This means all of my classmates look like me. All of the black students went to school together and all of the white students went to school together in a different or separate building. My classmates and I did not have all of the things we truly needed to learn the same way the white students did. We didn't always have books or paper or pencils and sometimes not even enough desks and chairs for everyone. In 1941, soon after I married my husband, Lucius Christopher Bates, a journalist, we started to publish a newspaper called the Arkansas State Press. It was very important that we report about the wrongdoings to people of color. Our newspaper became known all over the state of Arkansas for its purpose to improve or make better the social and economic circumstances or issues of African Americans. Our purpose was starting to make a difference. The city of Little Rock began to hire black police officers, which helped to lessen the number of racial incidents or issues. In 1952, I became the Arkansas president of the NAACP. NAACP stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. This organization is still around today and was created to work for the abolition of segregation and discrimination in housing, education, employment, voting, and transportation to oppose racism and ensure African Americans their constitutional rights. The purpose has changed slightly today and includes the rights of all people of color. From 1952 to 1954, there was a Supreme Court case called Brown versus Board of Education. This was the case that stated separate schools for white and black children was unconstitutional and a violation of the 14th Amendment, therefore banning segregation in public schools. A lot of people in towns did not agree with this decision. So when the time came for black and white students to come together in the same buildings, some people made it very difficult. The superintendent of schools in Little Rock decided that he wanted to integrate the schools. In 1957, still as the president of the Arkansas branch of the NAACP, I organized the Little Rock Nine, the first black students to enroll at Central High School. Most of the white citizens of Little Rock did not want this to take place and daily they would form angry mobs, protest, and block black students from entering the building. I came with those nine students to school for days and days, only to be threatened and turned away by the mobs and the Arkansas National Guard the governor had sent. On September 25th, 1957, myself, along with the Little Rock Nine, finally entered the building as we were escorted by 1,000 paratroopers sent by President Eisenhower. After that, I stayed in touch with all nine of them and helped them and their families as problems came up during their time at Central High School. Thank you all for listening to all of the important work I have done for the rights and equality of people of color. I hope I have inspired you in some way, big or small, to also believe in and fight for what is right. Please feel free to ask me questions and receive a red Gatorgram. Thank you all again.